Hi, creators. Welcome or welcome back to Academic Phoenix Plus. My name is Monica and I am your guide to your creative journey. In today's tutorial, we are going to be covering how to UV map this environment. We're going to be covering a lot of tools. So let's go ahead and get started. If you're new to this channel, I post tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and so much more. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out that creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and get started in UV mapping this fantastical environment. Okay, so in the last class, we were working on just what's called basically white boxing. It's a little bit above white boxing since I've already have things laid out. But in general, we have the basic shape, we have the depth, we have end cloth, we have the tree, and we have the idea of what the, the environment is going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and just start starting uh, start adding details to it. But first, let me find the concept art. We still have to model this part here, but I'm going to go ahead and just start, you know, texturing this part. So one of the things that I always encourage you guys is to, when you're looking at these models, to always consider beveling your edges. So when we render this, there's nothing in nature that has a 90 degree angle, right? So even knives have a little bit of a sharp edge, but it always has to have some sort of beveled edge. So the transition between the top and the side of an object should basically be beveled so it helps with that transition. Otherwise it looks really sharp. Let me hop over to my perspective view. I don't recommend that you just grab every single edge. I recommend that you grab the edges that you wanna bevel. So for me, it's going to be all of these. And I'm just holding down shift and double clicking. And for you could also bevel the sides, which I probably would also do. So let me go to my side view here and just grab these guys here because that will keep the shape. And then you can also do the same thing for the bottom since we are going to be seeing that part because of the water. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click, double click, double click, double click. Now this will add extra geometry to your um, environment, but it's also important because we want to make sure that the models look good. So let me just double check to make sure I have everything here. I just don't need to grab edges that don't help with this, with the look of this. Right, so you do a control B or the long way is under modeling. You can go to edit mesh bevel. And usually what I do is add a segment. So I have two segments. And what that does, it basically helps uh, convert this into quads. Otherwise it turns it into a triangle. So I like to add that. And then with the fraction, you can actually reduce the, the sharpness of it or make it really large, uh, the bevel. So just by doing that, you can take a look at the render. And there's almost like a tiny little highlight that goes around the edges. That's the bevel, and that makes it look realistic. Okay, I'm going to press stop. So if you want to, you can always go into your history. And if you want to offset or change the fraction a little bit more, you can. So it can be a little bit wider. That's a nice thing about history. But eventually, you need to delete the history. So let me go ahead and start beveling this as well. So I'm just going to double click, shift, double click. And then I'm gonna grab all these edges here and then do a control B and then do the same thing. So it's around 0.3. If you do the last command, that's the letter G on your keyboard, which will give you beveling, double click, double click. Oops, I want two segments here. My fraction could be 0.3. And there we go. So already we can see that by adding that, it really adds to our piece. I'm going to do the same thing for these guys. So I'm just trying to see if I can just grab everything. <laughs> I shouldn't. Well, actually, maybe I should grab these guys. Hmm. Let's see, I know that there's a little bit of a beveled edge here, so. And then of course, all the sharp points. 
Anything that sticks out basically needs a bevel. Control B, two segments, and I might leave it like that. Let's see what that looks like so far. I don't need to render this whole resolution. It's actually pretty large. So I'm going to go into my view, do test resolution, and do about 50%. I'm going to hit 1-1. One, one. It will render faster. And you know, since it's just a, a preview, it just will make things a lot easier for me. I don't have to render this gigantic thing. So when I do lighting, usually I do a test resolution of like 25% at first. And then as I get more and more detail, I start going to 50% and then 75% and then so on and so forth. All right, cool. It's coming along, I'll take a snapshot. Next, we can either just duplicate this one and replace them, or we can just do the same thing for all of them, which is just shift double click. Control B, two segments, nice and fast. All right. Let's go ahead and move on. So I'm just going to select everything and again, delete the history and freeze the transformations. All right. So for UV mapping, when you UV map something, it depends what you are trying to achieve. So if they're going to be sharing a texture, for example, these guys are going to be sharing the same texture. What I can do is, since they're all similar, you only need to model one, and then you can transfer the UVs if I did my modeling correctly. Now, if they're off a little bit, then I'm going to have to UV map all of them. Or I can just UV map one and then duplicate it. And then same thing with these guys, since they're all the same thing, if I UV map one, I should be able to transfer UVs to all of them which is kind of nice. But let's just start with this one. Now it is considered a hard surface. So up here at the top, let's go to UV editing. And doesn't look so great. So let's go to UVs. And I usually try automatic first to see if maybe, just maybe it might work. Now, the only reason why I tried it is because I know that this is automatic mapping does really well with like 90 degree angles. When it comes to organic models like this, it has a, ten a tendency not to do not to do as well. So those are the type of things that you have to kind of consider. So in this case, it actually isn't too bad, it's, but I do have to go ahead and start stitching. Now, everything has some sort of seam. So the question that you want to ask yourself is where do you want to put the seam? And the rule of thumb is usually the seam should be away from the camera, right? So in this case, this edge that I just selected should be the seam. So what I'm gonna do is right click on this and just go to cut, which will add a seam. And now I can start stitching the other pieces together. So for example, this one needs a home. And because of the beveling might be a little bit challenging, but not too bad. And then we can shift right click, stitch together, just like that. There's something happening here. So let me see. And so when I try to do stitch together, you'll notice that nothing happened. So stitch together works when there's two separate shells. When they're already together as one shell, then you can do shift right click sew, and then they will sew together. So I can see already that I'm having a little bit of some issues here, but Nothing unfolding can't fix. So I'm just clicking the letter G, which is sew, and I'm just going to go ahead and sew, sew these guys together. So any tiny little piece, I'd like to go ahead and sew if I can. Now, if you want, you can grab the faces, and you can go ahead and unfold now, right? And now it's already looking really nice. All right, let's move on. The next edge is here. And I can see that these guys have lost the pieces. So let me see where these guys are right there. All right. So I just select it and then do a stitch together. There we go. Same thing with this one. And I'm just clicking here. And then what, what I'm doing is just select again and clicking on the letter G, which is stitch together. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, then I will try so. So for example, Right there, nothing happened. So then I will just use so. All right, let's go ahead and go to faces again. Unfold. See if there's anything hiccuping. And then we can go ahead and stitch these guys together. 
So for me, this is kind of therapeutic. For others, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm finding kind of mind numbing and relaxing. If you guys really don't like UV mapping, which a lot of people don't, I would just recommend to just kind of go with the flow or put on some nice calming music and just kind of enjoy the process because it's actually pretty, pretty nice and relaxing. For me, it's actually really relaxing. Cool. So this is what we have so far and the squares are looking like squares. You can try getting it a little bit more straight over here if you want, but you'll notice that it gets a little crooked there. So no matter what happens, you're going to have a little bit of a distortion, but as long as the square looks like square, that's what the goal here. All right, let's take a look at the top. This is the top. So let's go ahead and do a stitch together. And a sew. All right. And then we have some loose pieces. So I'm going to guess it's the bottom, which it is. So again, we can stitch together. And then these guys belong here. All right. So. And we have a little loose piece up there, which I'm going to have to figure out what that is. Okay, let's see. So this is sticking out and you could leave it like that, but it's kind of distracting. So what I'm going to do is just cut it and then take it over here where it belongs. And then sew the little pieces. And then I just like to go through the edge to make sure I don't miss anything like here. Just those tiny little corners. Those bevel edges can be, they're great, but they can also be kind of like a pain because they don't stitch well together. Okay. And just for the sake of making sure everything's nice and unfolded, go ahead and click on that. And then we basically have a piece that's UV mapped. Cool. Now we're going to see if I can transfer it. So let me delete the history and all that stuff. I'm going to select one, shift, select the other. Hopefully this will work. Yeah, I'm going to go to mesh, transfer attributes, go to the options, and I'm going to edit, reset my settings. And the only thing you need to select is component and then apply. Transfer. Darn it. It didn't work. So if these guys are not exactly alike, it won't transfer. So that's kind of like the issue there. So that's not a problem. I could just delete this one. Oops, let me not delete it. Let me just duplicate this one. And I'll just go ahead and put it on top. So that's why when you guys work modularly, if you guys are going to be working on your assets, make sure that you UV map it first before you start duplicating it. Okay, that looks okay. Ooh, I should put this in the zero to one space. Okay, now it will, since I just did this, I might as well transfer it since I want them to make sure that they're on top of each other. So again, transfer attributes, and then you make sure component is on and apply. And now they're sharing the exact same UV space. So you can't even tell the difference. All right, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one. And... At first, when I first started UV mapping, it was like, who, and it's kind of like, I feel like everybody feels the way, who the heck came up with this horrible concept, <laughs> but no one's, nobody out there has figured out a way not Better. to use UV mapping. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny. All right. I think that's a good place to stop. We've done a lot of work by beveling our geometry to make it look really nice. And then of course, UV mapping the tower and duplicating them. Next is going to be UV mapping the rest of the objects, including the cement slabs and stone, and also our fancy flag. 
and get the scene ready for texturing. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you learned a thing or two, please like and subscribe. That is your message to me, letting me know that you like this content and that you want to see more. If you know of an artist that needs some help in UV mapping, please share my videos. That would be amazing. I would love to be able to help more artists like you. And also take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free resources, resources such as eBooks, 3D models, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. And also I sell e-courses. So if you want to deep dive into Maya when it comes to modeling, UV mapping, texturing, and so much more, take a look at my e-courses. Again, I really appreciate you taking the time being with me to create this environment. Keep creating, and I will see you next time when we finish up UV mapping our fantastical scene and get it ready for texturing.